Hi folks, welcome back. I'm Lynn with PFM Arts and today we're going to get messy. And how can you tell that we're going to get messy? It's because my backdrop on my on my table here doesn't look the way it normally does because number one, I have extra light on up over here because my outside window over there is actually really dark. It is getting on to be a little late in the day for me when I'm recording this and it's actually kind of boo weather today. So my outside natural light isn't doing such a good job right now, but I do have on another light and I do have on all the lights in, in my upstairs crafting area. So hopefully it'll still be okay. Just adjusting the camera a little bit. And the other thing that you might notice is my backdrop looks a little bit different because I do have some uh, butcher paper behind here because things are getting messy today. So last week I talked to you guys about the fact that I want to make my own planner agenda book for work and before and I never did this on on camera I made these kind of faux suede leather papers from a plastic a plastic bag a paper bag and I wanted to use this but for the book that I'm about to make well the thing is is that I did these all in different colors and I want it to be the same color on the front as it is on the back. Not that it necessarily has to be, but I just want it to be. So I decided I would go ahead and do this again. And since I was going to do it again, I would go ahead and film it and talk about some of the things that I had issues with on the first time. And one of those issues, um, where is an example? Not yet, right here. One of the things that I had an issue with is when I was crumpling the paper, I think I did it a little bit too aggressively and some of the areas tore. Now, once I get this down on a book on a cover, you're not really going to be able to see that. But I mean, if you can avoid it, then like, let's avoid it. And you can see I did it right here as well. I don't know why I'm putting my finger behind it because you can definitely probably see the white coming through. Yep. So let's try to avoid that this time. And I've brought along three colors. I brought along some ground espresso and we're, we'll talk about why this ink pad looks like that in just a minute and uh, some gathered twigs and some black soot and this is what we're going to put on or this is what I'm going to put on these ridge areas uh, just to kind of bring out the natural wrinkliness of this and kind of make it look more like leather. So let's get into it. So I did bring along two paper bags because I figured I would just go ahead and do two since I'm already set up anyway. So the first thing you need to do is move your stuff out of the way and go ahead and make this not a, not a paper bag anymore. So I'm going to start by ripping up the bottom here. And this is not a super heavyweight paper bag, but it's not a super lightweight either. I wanted something kind of in between because... In the end, I know I'm going to use that new cinch machine, and I know that it was already struggling with the cardboard that I'm going to put in the middle, so I don't want it to be too thick. And I think once I get the Mod Podge down on this bag, it will be, you know, pretty good and be fairly sturdy. So I don't think that's really going to be an issue going forward. But again, I didn't want to make it too thick or too thin because I didn't want it to tear. And I'm just turning this around so I can cut it. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And you may see, as soon as I get it zoomed out, zoom out. There we go. Okay. You may see my little corner holder downers, right? And that is because my butcher paper wants to curl up and I don't want it to. So, all right. I also know that I want this to be my finished pages I know are going to be eight and a half by eleven. So I've already started making them. Well at least making them on the computer. And I know that this is gonna have to be bigger than eight and a half by eleven. So let's see what it looks like. And then I'm gonna have to have some to you know wrap around the edges and actually get glued down and then put the the inside the inside on. So what do we have here? We have 11 and a half so it's going to be eight and a half by 11 so what if I made this the eight and a half part and this the 11 part I wonder if I could get two on here 
And then I could actually get two covers out of this one bag and it would be kind of dope. Ooh, except for this is where the seam comes together. So I'd have to pull it apart. Okay, whatever. Let's see. How big is this? Okay, let's do this. That's only eight. Hmm. Okay, well, let me go ahead and pull this apart. And I'm going to pull it right at the seam here. Now, I have obviously done the paper before, but I haven't done anything with the paper that I made. So, I will actually do this in, in two, maybe three parts, depending. So, if I cut this, this thing is like really long now. It's going like way off the side. This is, this is about the halfway point. Alright, so if I did this, then I'm going to definitely see these ridges in here. And... I'm not really mad about that because I know that it's not going to look terrible like this. This was one of those ridges right here where uh, the bag was originally folded. Do I have another one on here? That looks like it might have been one right there. And it, it doesn't look so bad. Mm, not so good either might be okay for like a smaller journal. I think I might have to use two bags. Mm -hmm. Just trying to think very quickly. I do have another bag here though. But this one's way smaller. And obviously I'm still going to get these same ones. Okay, let's just go with it. Let's just go with this. All right. So what I'll do is I think I can use, if I use this large piece here for the cover, then I should be able to use this piece for the back cover, and then it won't look as bad because it's on the back cover. And besides, I plan to fold it. Yeah, that's more than 12 inches. I plan to fold, like my notebook is probably going to be folded up most of the time, so I'm not even sure why I'm worrying about this cover, even though I just really want a cool cover. All right, so let me cut this into thirds with my good old scissors. And of course, yes, you could use anything that you wanted to to cut this, and you could worry about cutting it straight. But it's going to come out. It's honestly going to all come out in the wash. I, I kind of, I'm kind of annoyed by that, um, by that saying, for whatever reason. Um, it's going to all come out in the wash anyway when I go to trim it down for my book cover when I go to actually mount it. So. Not super concerned about that. Okay, let's get a little piece right there. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to do, well, I guess I'm going to do three of these. That might have been why I ended up with three of those other ones. But I'm just going to do the same. Okay, so tip number one when you are crinkling up the paper is to not be super aggressive with it. So I'm just going to kind of gently crinkle it up. Maybe. Let's hope. And then I'm going to be very careful when I'm unfolding it so that I don't accidentally tear it. And I think that's a problem that I had before is that I was a little too aggressive when I was, when I was crumpling it and then a little too aggressive when I was, when I was unfolding it. So I'm going to be a little bit more gentle this time. There we go. All right. That's good. I think I'll do a little bit more crinkling. So the more that you crinkle, the more of the, the, obviously the crinkles that you get in the paper, which means the more the ink has an opportunity to hold. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute when we go to, when we go to put on the ink. And I'm just trying to go back. I'm, I'm un, uncrumpling it and checking to see where there's maybe some areas that didn't get crumpled very much. And I'm just going back and trying to crumple those areas down. Or up? How do you crumple? You crumple, you crumple things up. Isn't that weird though? Like some things are up and down and whatever. Okay. Whatever. Moving on. Alright. That looks fairly decent except for that piece right there. That one didn't really crumple at all. Okay. I think that should be good. Alright. Now I'm going to... Flatten this out like so. 
Okay. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat because it's going, it's going to fix itself. So what I really wanted to use is I really wanted to use my walnut stain, but I have no idea what I did with my stupid walnut stain. It is somewhere in this room. So I thought that I would start off with the lightest color, which is gathered twigs, and then come in with some ground espresso and maybe do just a few little spots here and there of the black soot. So, gather twigs, here we go. And I'm just going to take the ink pad and I'm going to lightly go over the paper bag and you can see, can you see? Yeah, you can see. You can see where it's picking up and getting the ink from the, the ridges that have formed on this paper. And I'm trying to do this somewhat uniformly. And when I say that, I'm trying to go with the same pressure all the way across. And honestly, for this one, since this is my lightest color, I'm starting now to press down as I'm going across this. So it's actually picking up more color because I'm going to layer in the, the other two colors, like I said. So let's talk about why my ground espresso looks like it does and it looks like it's held together with some not bobby pin not clothes pins those are paper clips uh well because it is and as soon as i take this off you will see why mm -mm -mm. here's the big reveal oh my goodness did it finally fix itself Wait, did this fix itself? <gasps> it did. Y'all, I don't know what happened, but when I bought this thing from Michaels, I can't believe it finally fixed itself. That makes things so much easier. Uh, when I bought that from Michaels, it wasn't, it would not stay flat. It was like rounded and I literally got it out of a package. It was a brand new package and it would not stay flat. But the problem was, is that the cover, because the, the thing down below wasn't flat, the cover wouldn't stay on. So it would sit basically like this and the only way that I could get it to stay on is if I put those clip wow that actually literally has been sitting like that for six months probably and it finally fixed itself that's amazing I'll have to tell my husband because he's the one who came up with that all right well never mind yeah I don't know why it did that like I said it was still in the package there wasn't anything wrong with the package I don't know if like the heat got to it uh during shipment and it warped or I have no idea what happened. It was the weirdest thing. Like, I took it out of the package and it was just like, burp. So weird. Okay. So, more layering is what I'm doing here. And I have, I'm using a slightly, I say slightly, it's significantly lighter, lighter pressure on that when I'm doing it because I don't want it to go down as far as the gathered twigs did here. Now, I'm going to come in with the black soot and I'm just going to barely go across the top of this. I actually really like the way that this is looking. I think what I'm going to do after this, you guys know that, that Ikea paper that I bought the other day. I'm going to try to do the same technique with that white Ikea paper and just see what happens. I'm just very, very curious. I mean, obviously it's still going to turn out and it's still going to be usable, but I was wondering, like, what is it actually going to look like? Is it going to look like, like good weird or bad weird? So I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to use the same, wait. I don't even know if I'm going to use this piece when I end up doing it, but I mean, like, you know, after I cut it out, but I know I'm probably definitely going to use this centerpiece. I want to, want to get it good. So I'm going to use the same three colors when I do the other, well, three pieces of paper that I have. Actually, I'll go ahead and do that. All right. So this step, once again, is crumpling, which honestly, it's pretty fun. Uh, I think... I think tearing is more fun, but, you know, crumpling is also pretty fun. Here we go with crumpling. And unfolding it gently. 
or gently ish, and then coming back in and squishing it up in a different way. I'm going to squish it up in a different way, why not? You know, you could get, and I guess it wouldn't necessarily be recycling, but I do see some of these things. Actually, I saw one today when I was at the... Dang it, why didn't I pick that up? Shoot. That wasn't today, but when I went to that, uh, when I went to that bin store, they had, uh, one of those, uh, large, um, what do you call it? The leaf bags? You know, those really big, like, paper leaf bags that you're supposed to put your yard waste in? They had one there, and I was like, oh, yeah, look at that. It's a leaf bag. I don't need to have a leaf bag. Like, what is wrong with me? I should have picked that up. That would have been great for this, and then I would have had, I would have had journal covers or agenda covers. I would have had agenda covers for days. Mm, opportunity mess. Alright, so that's crumpled. I think I'm going to go ahead and crumple the other one, but I'm going to put myself on fast forward because you guys know now my two tricks on crumpling paper, which is, well, I guess maybe it's three, is crumple all the areas. Don't crumple too aggressively. And don't uncrumple too aggressively. Uh oh, did I just put my fingernail through this? No, that's fine. Is that a hole? No, oh, there's a little one right there. It'll be fine. Alright, so I'm gonna finish crumpling this one. I'm gonna crumple the next one and I will be on fast forward. Okay. Okay, folks, I'm back. I did it. I'm going to do it the same way again. I'm going to take my lightest color. So this is kind of like my background color. And I'm going to go in fairly heavily. And when I say heavily, I am, I am pressing down as I am rubbing across. You can see all the color. Well, oh, actually, I don't know. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. Again, guys, apologize for the lighting. I try my best to film at the best times of the day, but y'all know sometimes, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta strike while the iron's hot. When you get a minute, when you get a minute to do something, just go ahead and do it. Plus, I was really excited <laughs> to get started on this. I hope this is gonna turn out nicely. I think it will. In my mind, it will, anyway. Moreover, I hope it's gonna be useful. Okay, so there's that one fairly heavily and I'm going to come back with the next color which is my ground espresso and I'm going to go over this and I'm going to go I don't know I guess medium pressure I don't know if you can see this but the but the paper isn't being stretched taut as much when I'm doing this one because of the pressure that I'm using and that actually looks neat 
And honestly, I'm not mad about whatever whatever's going on there. I think that looks kind of kind of cool too. Okay, go ahead and get that. Okay, not terribly concerned about the edges, but definitely want to get as much across. You can come back with your hands and blend. Of course, your hands are going to look like this when you're done. But this is this is not a clean project. That's why I went ahead and put down this this butcher paper on the top. Hopefully, it's big enough for all of my all of my messiness. All right, and lastly, just like I did the other one, I'm coming back in with some black soot, and I'm just kind of barely kissing the ridges here as I'm going across. Just hitting some areas, making sure that I not necessarily hit them evenly, but I definitely don't want a spot that you know has all of the the rich dark color of the black soot and then other areas that don't have any. So there's that and I'm happy with that. And again, you can use whatever color you want, but these are the colors that I wanted for this one. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, but I will put this on fast forward. Okay, here we are. Here's the first one that I did, the first ink. The ink is, I don't know, kind of dry-ish. Not really. But it doesn't really matter. So, in this bowl, I have a very small amount of water. It's probably, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon, maybe two. And then I actually, if you see that little oil that's floating in there, that is some eucalyptus oil. Um, and I am putting some Pantene conditioner in here. Uh, why am I using Pantene? Uh, because it's the same one that I used last time and it turned out well. Uh, but then number two, it was also on sale either at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar General and I got it for like two bucks. Maybe a dollar. Who knows? Uh, cause that was when the Dollar Tree was a dollar is when I bought that. So it's been up there for a while. Um, so I put, so last time I did not put the, um, what is that stuff called? It's the, um, the essence drops, the essence drops, the oils. Yeah, there we go. The oils in here. Um, and I thought this time I would go ahead and do it. Not necessarily that I think that I, I'm going to make my journal smell like, like, like eucalyptus. Um, but I thought maybe it would. I don't think it really will after I get done putting the Mod Podge on there. And this looks so goopy and gross. 
Uh, but I thought that, you know, at least, like right now, it was smell really, really good, and it definitely does. So I don't know how this is going to turn out. And, you know, if it's, if it, like, stains this or makes it look a little bit oily, I thought that would be okay, too. So I'm just kind of mixing this up, and I did put in a lot. I don't know how much of that Pantene I did, but you can see it's, it's still, still pretty solid. And... I mixed up so much because I'm going to do all three of these at one time and potentially more. I'll do more off camera probably. Um, I did make a mistake. So this is one of those Aura rings. I'm just trying to get it off with one hand because I, I, I don't want to gloop all that conditioner in there. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to take about that much of it. I don't know how much that is. I'm going to start with that and I'm just going to go over the paper. Now, the ink, when I'm doing this, will move around a little bit. It might migrate. It's definitely going to come off in your hands. Your hands are going to be gross. Um, and your counter will take a little bit more. Will will be gross as well. So that's why I put down the paper before I got started. The background paper. And what this is going to do is it's going to do the same thing that conditioner does on your hair, hair, and that is make it soft. And that means that it's going to feel a little bit more like leather because, listen, that, that doesn't even crumple anymore. It just kind of smooshes. Um, it's going to make it feel a little bit more like leather, number one. And number two, it's going to make it look a little more like leather or maybe a suede. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm going to go over this with Mod Podge anyway, so it's not like it really matters. So this is what it looks like after you get the conditioner on here. And this is a fairly, I wouldn't say a thick coating, but I would say that I definitely got all the edges. And you're going to want to let this dry, and that's what I'm going to do in the next step. But look at the difference already. And this will dry, and it'll end up looking, let me show you the dried one again. Actually, let me get the, let me get the one that, where I used the same kind of colors on. It's going to look like this once it's dry. So that's very, very different things. And this one sounds like this when I move it. This one kind of sounds the same, but this one definitely doesn't. Just, just so you can have some perspective if you decide to try this. Yeah, it doesn't. All right, so you're definitely going to want to wait for this to dry before you move on to the next step. But I think this is... I think this looks really cool, to be perfectly honest. Um, and eh. Y'all, did not plan ahead. Do not know where to put this. Have you, <laughs> you guys ever done this before? Oh, shoot. All right, all right, all right. Make a decision. Okay, right here. All right, I'll put it on my cinch box for right now. Perfect. <laughs> oh, oh, you're doing great, sweetie. All right, same thing again about that much. I'm going to go over this paper. Doing doing a squish with my hands. Oh no, I think I got one of my hairs on here. I thought I felt it. I probably did. All right. Well, well this is mine anyway, so it's fine. I'm going to go ahead and get some of this on the on the reverse side and honestly, guys, you can you can see the the method method that I'm using to to apply the conditioner if you even really want to call it a method. I'm just trying to get it on there and get a get a decent amount on here and just kind of squish it around a little bit. Um, I'm fairly certain that I'm not going to use the edges because of the size of the of the of the book that I'm making but I still want to make sure that I go ahead and get them you know just in case I do use them or maybe I'll use them for another project. All right, I'm just kind of squishing that around here, making sure it's real. Yep, there's a hair. I can feel it. Where is it? It's right here. Ooh. Okay, it, it's probably mine. I think I got it. Okay. Now look at my hands now. Look at that. Look at that yellow. Is that coming off as yellow? It's pretty gross. But really, it's just conditioner and ink. I mean, conditioner is conditioning, so it's basically like I have lotion on my hands, right? It's really weird looking lotion. That's what it looks like on the back. Well, I'll go ahead and put some on the back too. Why not? I didn't put any on the back of the other one. I mean, it's going to end up seeping through anyway. 
But I will tell you this, like the, the eucalyptus in there, it smells really, really good right now. So if nothing else, I'm getting enjoyment of breathing the eucalyptus as I do this right now. Yeah, oh, that's kind of cool. I wonder if I could do something with that. Can you guys see that? When I picked it up, it ended up leaving some of the, <laughs> some of the ink on there. I was going to say I might have mixed up too much, but I do have that other smaller paper bag that I want to do. All right, and shoop. Just shoop it on there. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to continue to do this, and uh, we will come back next week and take a look at how this thing has dried out, the papers, the three papers that I'm making. And I think maybe in the meantime, I'm going to experiment on some of that white Ikea children's whatever roll of drawing paper, I think it was. Oh yeah, it was like that easel paper where you're supposed to put it on the easel and then you want a new sheet and you just like bring it down and, and then tear it off, whatever. I'm going to try to do that and I might use some like more fun colors and, and see if it works. I don't know if it's going to work out. It might look awful. But I mean, I already have my conditioner mixed, so why not? I'm very curious to see what else we can do with this. Instead of making it look like leather, maybe we can just make it look kind of neat. I mean, I'm perfectly cool with it looking kind of neat. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead, do this, and we will also continue on with the making of the 2023... Dun-dun-dun! agenda planner book book thing for me to use at work. All right, guys. Hope you're having a great day. See you next time. Bye.